evening and welcome back to another episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. This is episode 70. My name is Ethan Shalloway. I'm here alongside with Chris Salona. And I don't know if you guys know, but today's a special day because it's a Friday and we don't usually record on Fridays, but when we do, I don't know if you guys can hear that out there in the world, but there is there's something there's something happening here. There's there's a few things going on in this episode. And uh, we like to call this one Friday Beers. Yeah, we haven't had one of these in so, a while. So basically, we've pushed off recording all week. <laughs> and now it's Friday. And we have to get a recording in. And Drew has been asking. Well, actually, Drew's been really cool. But yeah. um, it's, it's Friday Beers. So this is what happens when you push recording to the end of the week. Uh, you have a few beers. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we are, we are going for a two-episode streak with our shirts off. Very important. That's, bi- that's big news. Yeah. Um, so, and you get to see exactly what beer we're drinking. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Chris, I was in the beer cave and I had a very important decision. We're, yeah, we're going the lightest of beers yeah, we tough. can. The mountains are blue, so I decided to go with Coors Light. Mm-hmm. Big Coors Light guy. They drink it in Always Sunny in Philadelphia, so I kind of... Yeah, you kind of you kind of have to do it. Um, so you're going, um, you're you going Coors Light Chris? the whole time then, huh? Coors Light the whole time? Coors Light the whole right. time. I've, yep. I've got a little little medley of sorts. I decided to start with a uh, with a Budweiser Light. Did you, did you um, go pick sixer? Did you pick oh, no, six? this is just what's in my fridge. Um, I got a Budweiser Light. I have two of those with me. One of them is open. Um, I have the uh, Narragansett Tall Boy naturally, and then um, for the, for those for those who are not beer aficionados, I, I, I do have a Twisted Tea with me. <laughs> I love it, dude. You're throwing the kitchen sink. You gotta be us. ready for anything. You have to be ready for anything. So that's what we are here on the Grunge Bible Podcast, ready for anything. Always, episode seventy. Ethan, how's it going today? Um, I'm I'm really really happy to be here with you. Um, this episode is going to be released on July 25th. Uh, we're sitting down, as you said, on Friday, July 22nd, to do this. How's it going? And I'm doing really good, actually. Great. Energy levels are really high. I'm really excited. Um, I we pivoted. And, you know, because we were going to do, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit. We had an episode kind of idea and um, we've kind of changed our minds around some things. And for some reason, I got really energized. Actually, I know why. It's because it's Friday. It's Friday. And we had, I had, I had a full week of work, which is great. So I Very feel good. like really, really accomplished. Yep. The world championships at the track and field and, or track and field world championships in Oregon are going on. Yeah, my your, your training partner is out there competing. I, my training partner, a lot of and a lot of my old teammates and your old teammates, probably from over the years. So um, we've been watching track and field every night, and um, there's just a lot going on. And sometimes in July, uh, it can be kind of down. So if you're not like vacationing, it's just hot outside, and it kind of can be hard to move during yeah, the week. Tough. So, so I feel like uh, this has been one of those weeks that you're just excited and happy that it's summer, and you know. I mean, I, we, we, I get to have a podcast with one of my best friends. Really, Cheers really to that. Pretty, pretty difficult to, uh, to have a bad day when, when this is going on here. Uh, but that's, that's good, yeah. Um, as you said, in the summertime, things kind of uh, get a little out of hand and get away from us a little bit. And um, before we get into it, so our plan for this episode, for episode 70, as I think we spoke about on the page, was to talk about Audio Slave. And um, that's that's not going to be happening today because just as the accumulation of the week and where we are right now and what's going on, um, we we won't be able to give it our best. And I think there's a lot of topics that we can discuss on this forum that deserve the best. Uh, right. and they deserve us at our best, whatever that may be. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I don't know <laughs> you know, the, the, the verdict is out for that. Um, so we're, we're kicking that down the road uh, probably to next week, I would say. And. Summertime, Ethan, is, is tough for us. We're, we're moving around a lot. We're traveling a lot. I know you're going to be traveling uh, in the month of August, and I, I don't think there's any better time you know, before we thank everybody to kind of give a little bit of background on what to expect from the Grunge Bible podcast over these next pretty much four or five weeks until we get yep. into September. Yep, right through August is what I was thinking. The next yeah. five weeks. I think we got the last day in uh, July Yep, um, is a Monday. Or then... No, August 1st is a Monday, yep. Oh, August 1st, yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. So, so yeah, the next July. the four episodes after this, this yep. at least. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to try to do a little bit shorter of episodes. So usually we hover around 50 to 70 minutes, and we're going to probably bump these down, if at all possible. So me, me and Chris also have a joke it's that tough. every time we try to go short, we, go, we end up going long anyway. So 
Um, we are going to try to go a little bit shorter and just hit a few bands that we may not usually talk about. Um, for example, Pixies, you know, some mud honey, audio, mother love audio bone, slave, audio slave. Yeah, Mel, yeah, Melvin's malfunction. You know, maybe get into some older, older yeah. grunge. Um, so yeah, and just do so, quick hitters. Absolutely, and, and I think you know we're at the point right now with just what's going on in our personal lives and just our plans and the hectic nature of this time of year for both of us. Um, you know, the plan is to kind of uh, because we don't miss around here, as as everybody knows, the Grunge Bible Podcast does not miss every Monday. It's there. Um, the plan is to bank some episodes. Uh, you know, over the next week or two, so we can pretty much roll out through the rest of August and and just you know kind of get together every week and uh, and talk about some of these bands that are very important to the genre, very important to all of us here who listen. Um, you know, and just kind of give them their due in a uh, concise and clear fashion. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. And the nice thing is that this episode will come out on the 25th. Uh, and I would love to hear uh, if people have requests for bands that we can talk yeah. about over this next month. Um, because the plan is, as Ethan said, to take, you know, each week, just chat up a band, talk about a band and, uh, you know, kind of go from there. Because at the end of the day, people are here. Uh, they want to hear about music. And we love doing that. Just not today. <laughs> Yeah, and Chris, if you're up for it, what we could do is we could put it up to the people. We could give them four options on a poll, and we could literally do an episode on we the could. band that they choose. And that would be kind of fun. And, you know, most likely, you know, you know, <laughs> unless you pick a, a, a band that we really know nothing about, but I think we could give a good 20 minutes on yeah totally uh, pretty much any band. You know, yeah. give, us, give us a week in advance, you know, what, what can you do? It's like you a school project. You can make anything project. happen in a week. This is a school project, you know, glorified. Yeah. And it's, the still, it's still going on. And um, so that's that's kind of the plan for the Grunge Bible podcast moving forward. Um, and, and kind of when we get to the fall, um, you know, in September, um, our lives kind of get a little bit more hammered down and set in stone. So it's a lot easier to plan. But logistically yeah. right now, this is a challenging time. But we hope that you will join us for these next couple of weeks as we'll get to talk about maybe your favorite band. Yeah. And it's not even, you know, it's like funny... It's almost that time of the year we just kind of also need a reprise. It's a vacation time. A lot of yeah, people are out there and you kind of away. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit more like we boast about how we haven't missed, but now I think we put ourselves in a corner because you know we want to take maybe we still, maybe we still a break, miss. but we're, yeah. we can't miss. We can't so take a break. We're not allowed. Yeah, we we're not allowed to miss. There's we're not a lot allowed of until until one hundred, right? Until 100, yeah. That, well, and then I, I guess 104 would 104, be two years. 104, two, two year mark, and then we'll blow it up. We'll delete it. It'll be great. Yeah. Um, that's what we'll do, but, and then um, we'll do 10 episode series and we'll, they'll, they'll come out, come out once a year or once every two years or something. Yeah. It'll be great. And we'll be doing this till we're 60 and it'll be great. Um, so that's kind of, that's the state of the union for grunge Bible. Yeah. Uh, very important to kind of keep everybody updated. And, uh, we're looking forward to getting those suggestions. And, uh, I think if there's one place that we could turn to for priority suggestions, Another impromptu perk of being a Patreon member, and as always, this episode, episode 70, would not be possible, I'll raise my glass to the, to the top level patrons over here on Patreon, and uh, <laughs> today, we would like to thank the following individuals for making that commitment to support us on a monthly basis. Our top level is comprised of Eddie Vedder got me through my second divorce, likewise, as we said, he always does that, Shoe the Shoeless, I Hate Your Mom, Kitty Cooper, Brother Nature, Kara Kay, The Blue Owl, Carlene Salona, my mother, Seattle 4 fanboy from New Jersey, Fresh Tendonitis, our number one fan from Australia, Wayne Staley, What the Fuck's Up Denny's, Jamie Lynn, Release Millie, Alexis Shannon, Kayla Jean, Sonny Mashburn, Chris LSMS, Laura and Irene, Sue, Nikki Six, Fuck Soup, Rachel Corning, Alex Long, Darian Riddle, Captain High Top, Black Hole Sean, Doug Endy, and Jade Mercado. Thank you to all of you for continuing to support us. Some of you all have been with us for over a year now on the Patreon, and that means a lot to us. That's amazing. Um, what is, what, what Patreon name do you think is the most clever right now? What um, sticks so, out to you? So far, I, I have to say, um, I love What the Fuck's Up, Denny's. I always right, have. That's still, that always cuts through for me. Yeah, that, that, one's, that one's a standout. I'm a big fan of Eddie Vedder got me through my, got me through my second divorce. <laughs> um, I think we can all, whether, whether we've been divorced previously or not, or whether it's something we aspire to, I think we can all find some solace in that. 
Um, Did you that's say what aspire, that, aspire to? <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's what Ed does for us, you know? He's he's always there for us in the good times and the bad. I also appreciate fresh tendonitis quite a bit. What? Yeah. Those are the two that I was I was thinking fresh tendrils is the song that it's referring to, or, the you know, yeah. the patron decided to name it after and I, i've been thinking about that because this song has came up a few times because i liked it yeah put it on the put it on the playlist so it's been showing up so i've been thinking about that so i feel like every time it comes up um I, yeah. i've listened to it afterwards but then what the fuck's up denny what the fuck is up denny's um you've made a few you know recently a few memes have you know yeah, they, they keep they've, getting they've surfaced they're, well, the, recently, the, the Grand know, Slam continues yeah. to and show I don't know up. if you notice. I, I don't know if you know this, but recently an alternate angle of the Denny's Grand Slam was <laughs> released on the internet, and um, it's kind of um, it's, it's stage left, so it's looking into into the band, and then the mosh pit would be in front of the band, obviously, so to the left of the camera frame. And um, I have to tell you, it's it's even more electric than the classic angle. But <laughs> so is there is there how how long is the official concert? Do we have oh, like it's, a full. It's 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 decently long, I think. You, you okay? So there is video like the full length is out there. I'm pretty sure the full length. Well, everything that you need, I think it's like 15 minutes or so. You know. Oh which that, is, yeah, that's, that's is yeah, that, that's that is enough. that's full length. If you ask me. <laughs> you know what we need to do, Ethan? We need to get them on the podcast. Oh my gosh, that is the best idea we've ever had. That's, that's so what we good. need to do. That'll be our project while we're taking a break uh, from actively recording each week. We're gonna try to nail those guys down um i I know they're out there i've seen i've seen their instagram page before it's it's out there i forget what name it is but i'm good at that stuff i will i will dial it up that's yeah that's an easy that's an easy rabbit hole right there so um okay when when was this do you know the date i have no fucking clue okay i I need i kind of want to look it up do you think they're like our age i think they're about our age they've got to be in their mid-20s now um because it, it couldn't have been it it couldn't have been more than ten years ago, but it couldn't have been less than like six or seven years ago. So I think I'd place it like twenty fifteen or so, maybe uh, twenty fourteen, somewhere around there. But I think that is the top priority moving forward uh, for Grunge Bible and for the Grunge Bible podcast uh, to yeah. make that happen. I'll look into it later. Absolutely, yeah, we're gonna have to. That's and good. kind of speaking speaking in ways that uh, we can be supported uh, on this podcast. Obviously, supporting us on Patreon, listening to this show buying merchandise, interacting with us. Uh, there's also another very good way that you can uh, you can help us here or just uh, make your presence known to us, and that is to leave a review. And Ethan, mm. we, we got a review on Apple Podcast, and I know you haven't heard this before because I don't think you check, but I check from time to time, and uh, I would like to read you this review that we got. Let's hear it. So... This is this is over on Apple Podcasts, and uh, the review is uh, two stars out of five. Okay, and oh, this was sweet, dude. <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely. And this was submitted on July fifteenth, so presumably in the wake of episode sixty nine. Um, nice. And the title of the review is called Wikipedia Reading, and the body text of this review says, "Quote: Some good info. Unfortunately, neither of the hosts were actually cognizant during the grunge era." So all they can do is read off Wikipedia and give millennial opinions after the fact. After hearing the hatred for Guns N' Roses, I had to tap out. So, Ethan, what's what's the live reaction to this review? Oh, my gosh. Well, my my initial reaction, my my gut reaction is... And we're doing this live. You, You hadn't heard this before. No, yeah, yeah. He said something that I find funny because it's kind of exactly the opposite of what I've heard from other people. So he said they weren't alive from the era, therefore they're just recapping it. Right. But I've heard from other people that I do trust and I you know, I enjoy is they lived through it, so now they're hearing from a different perspective, which is us because we didn't live through right. it. So now you're you're cro- crossing generations and crossing musical, you know, yeah. tastes and and how it affects them and and just perspectives. And you know, the commenter or the reviewer, you know, I guess he just wants the people that were there and to get the same, you know, the views all the time. So my initial reaction is it's funny because a lot of people like the multiple angles, but this guy doesn't want those. He just he wants the want people those. that he wants the people that live there and had the same exact experience as him. And that's all he wants. So it's just funny because that's 
kind of lame. So where do you think? So so he gave us two stars, so we missed out on three additional stars. I yeah. think there's at least a star and a half handicap in his brain for us not being born at the time, which we I can't. Was at least we, two, yeah. Yeah, we, we can't do anything about that. And I'm assuming we lost. Did we lose the third star because we read off of Wikipedia allegedly? And that's not true, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> or do we lose the third star because we bashed on Guns N' Roses? What do you think? Or is I think combo? the gun- I, I would say the Guns N' Roses has yeah. to be his, this man's favorite band yeah. or woman. Yeah. And yeah, he was pretty upset. So we lost a star for Guns yeah. N' Roses, and, which and is thing, fine. I'll lose a star for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that any day. I'll take, I'll take those out. Uh, you star, know, I'll, star, I'll, I'll, star, I'll give star. them away. You can have them. You can take them. Keep, keep them out of my face. Um, the thing about the Wikipedia, um, the Wikipedia reading that we've been accused of doing, is, and that's interesting because the, the era, he said we gave opinions after the fact the era is over, so any opinion is an opinion after the fact. And additionally, I take, I take exception to this Wikipedia reading thing because little do they know, I hold myself up in my public library reading through primary source documents for hours to prepare for these podcasts. I don't use Wikipedia. Sometimes I've even, I've even cornered the individuals who were around at the time. I, I've had a couple of tough encounters <laughs> where I've. I've cornered Stone Gosser, and I've told you him, go you know, this is how it's going to go. You, you got to give me, yeah, you got to give me the inside information. So um, I take, I take a little bit of offense to that, but like we talk about all the time, Ethan, we make this podcast for the people who enjoy it, and if yeah. people don't enjoy it, that's fine. It's, it's just not for them. So uh, this individual who left this review, uh, who na- who named themselves on Apple Podcasts, uh, big up, big up. Um, I, it's just not for you, which is fine. Um, but this yeah. is a great opportunity for everybody that it is for. Um, if you would like to submit a review so we can kind of bury this one uh, or leave an even shittier one so we have more source material to discuss here, uh, now's the time. There's no better time than now to uh, get some reviews in now that we've got 70 episodes soon to be under our belts. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. Yeah, another angle of the Wikipedia is so this man doesn't like it, but. <clears throat> So sometimes there, there will be times where we'll, we'll talk about bands and you'll give me a lot of good information and then you'll tell me that you found it from Wikipedia. But I love it because I don't need to read it because you are here it. to tell and, you. And there are tons of people that are listening to this podcast that the information, if it's right, it doesn't matter where, you know, I mean, like Wikipedia is very reputable nowadays. I, I think it is. I mean, I, I think it is. I mean, I mean, that's that's where I learn about most. Maybe I wouldn't things. go there for medical. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe not I medical wouldn't go there advice, to diagnose like, something or to, I mean, uh, you know, do my a, taxes. Yeah, but for Woodstock, you know, '69, like I'm pretty sure it'll get me it'll get me the get yeah. the job done. Like, actually, I had a okay. nice conference call with Bob Weir about that. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! So you know that, that that is what it is. You know, you take the good with the bad, but you know, the Grunge Bible podcast keeps on rolling. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. Yeah, that is awesome. I actually, so yesterday, um, or was it two days ago? Yeah, two days ago, I did listen to Audio Slave um, throughout the entire day on the job. I put it yeah. on, I brought the speaker. I love when it doesn't always work out that I can play music while we're on the job if it's a pretty, you know, if it's a tight spot. But if yeah. it's just like kind of general work, you got to read the room. The, if the tree's on the ground, yeah, if it's not like anything we really need to pay attention to for safety wise. Um, I love playing it, and I was actually playing it and getting some opinions from the guys and stuff. And I was asking them, I was like, "What do you think about Audio Slave?" And um, you know, and well, one of the guys, one of our climbers, and I guess I'm kind of stealing some content for the next week. But That's fine, it's a nice little appetizer. Right, right, right. He was like, you know, he's like, when they burst on the scene and they played on the rooftop, he's like, if I was in the street, he's like, he's like, I would have climbed up, I would have climbed up on. Like on the roof right there in front of everybody. If I would have noticed Chris Cornell up there, I would have shook his hand for all of, all of the work he's done over the yeah. years. And I was like, hell yeah. And I was like, that's such, a, it, it is such a, I love that performance. I think, I think oh, we'll get too. into it. Yeah. We'll get into it a little bit more next week. Yeah. But and it was great that just like it was playing. It was like, this is audio sleep. Well, that, right? was was like, that was their live debut like, oh, in 2002. Yeah. It was right in the wake of the release of the, the, the self titled album. And I mean, what a way to introduce yourself to the world and, you know, not to get too deep into it, but, you know, it kind of happened at such like a interesting period where the internet had gained a lot of utility and yes like the entire first record got leaked like like uh, several months before the actual thing came out and 
it the the band wasn't officially named yet so it was it was released under civilian or the civilian project or something um so it was kind of like that weird that weird area where you know you could go to the internet to rip some of this stuff but um yeah that, i mean that introduction and it's funny for me with audio slave that most of the time when i listen to music the 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 foremost thing for me are the lyrics audio slave's right. not like that for me i listen for the way the music sounds and it was just such a great intersection of of two bands really obviously with chris coming from soundgarden and the members of rage minus zach um i mean they had so much music creation under their belts at the time that it, they really seemed to get together at, at, a, at a point in time where they were equally inspired and, and very heavily inspired and and they just created magic you know for for yep. for those three albums that they put out and i'm really excited to talk about it next week um it was just, it was just a really, really great period. And it was funny. I came across a, uh, when, when the self-titled album came out, Pitchfork gave it like <laughs> 1.7 stars out of 10 and just dragged it for being like cock rock or something. Oh my and gosh. We're going to read that. We're, we have to, yeah. re- I'm going to write that down. We have to read that. Re- yeah. We're going uh, to, we're, we're going we're gonna to declare war on Pitchfork next week. We've um, done it before and we'll do it again. Yeah, but it's just like the Grunge Bible podcast. Some people might love it and some people hate it, but the people that hate it, it's it's just not for them. Um yeah. so you know, pitchfork, you know, they can yeah. they can do with it what they what they want to do. But yeah. yeah, audio slave, fuck. So good. Yeah. Um and, especially guess, especially that first album. Yeah, and I think what you were saying, obviously two bands coming together. Um, last thing I'll say about it, because obviously we don't want to give it away and actually do our audio slave episode <laughs> right now. I was thinking about that. I was like, I almost let's texted do it you. Live. I almost texted you said like, let's finish this audio slave episode yeah. now. Nah. Um, <laughs> it is cool. I mean, like, I feel like um, Chris Cornell, like, he went into a really nice space to kind of like leave Sar- Soundgarden and explore a whole new band and a whole. And I think that was really good for his musicianship and writing capability you know, writing abilities and i think it helped yeah. him i and think it helped him tremendously and it's interesting because for personally for chris it was a tough time in his life where he was struggling with right. a lot of different things but from a musical standpoint you know both the members of rage and chris had remarked during the early days of audio slave after that first record came out that the songwriting process felt much more advanced and more cohesive than it had been in their previous outfits and you know, maybe that's 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 a function of just kind of being in a fresh environment and and there's, you know, new people that you haven't created something with before. Um, I think when you have talented people and creative people like that and you get together and you, you approach something from the honest perspective that they certainly did with those records, um, there's a lot of magic floating around the room. And, you know, I think in most cases the magic is there, but it's whether or not you can capture it and convey it to the general public. And I think that's something that they were able to do immediately and consistently throughout, uh, you know, throughout their lifetime as a band, uh, you know, from 02 to 07 or or what have you. And a really, really special band and and a special group. I think the only thing that I don't like about their uh, about the band is is the name Audio Slave. Uh, Chris, oh my gosh! Apparently, really? Chris came up with it. I don't know. I, I mean, I am like, I am on the opposite side you, of this. You like I it, love huh? it? I do. Okay. I love it. Why don't you? Okay, let's get into. Shoot, we're we're doing this. Um, it, why we'll don't do Why it. don't you like it? I don't know. It's just like out of all the things, but I mean, that's like what makes it. That's what that's what makes it unique, I guess. So I mean, I don't have any better ideas. So I really, I guess, I should just shut my mouth. Yeah. It sounds like a lame take to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I ripped it from Pitchfork. <laughs> I've heard people have, people say that when I say the Beatles suck, they say that's a really lame take that you're. Yeah. But I don't care. Um, yeah. I, I I like it because you know some people are slaves to music and slaves to like. Not I certainly slaves, am. Look, look at us like, on a Friday night. Right. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, people like they they really worship music and um, which is you know you know it's a great outlet in so many yeah. different ways um yeah. but i think it's clever i mean they're just you know putting two good words audio slave sound garden like pearl jam you know, pearl jam <laughs> like you take two meat good puppets. names yeah meat puppets you know the melvins <laughs> mud honey corn <laughs> i mean i don't know I, I i thought it was it it just i think i like the words you know to kind of yeah, I don't know, man. It just yeah. has a really good like, and, and I think dystopian that, like yeah, feel yeah, to it. I would agree. 
you know, maybe you've changed my mind on this. And I, I think something about Audio Slave that always sticks with me. I'm not me. trying to. I'm just, you know. <laughs> hey, you know, I have an open mind. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sieve. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. I'm some, not a sieve. I'm, I'm a fountain. I don't know. I'm a. Um, You're a good guy. You understand. I try to be, you know, we yeah, try to you be understand. around here. I think, I think something for me with Audio Slave that I have a special attachment to is they were, you know, one of the bigger rock bands, I guess, of like, if you want to call it like our generation and like growing up yeah. in, the, in the early to mid 2000s where, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends that, you know, their go-to bands were Blink and Green Day and the like, uh, even Good Charlotte or something from that time period, the Foo Fighters, obviously, but Audio Slave, there's a lot of our peers, you know, and people that are in our age cohort in their mid, late 20s now who, that was their band, that was their rock band that was out, that they waited for those records. They waited for those albums to come out and, you know, they downloaded them off of the early iteration of iTunes or whatever, or illegally downloaded them from LimeWire and crashed the family computer. Um, and I think like, it's the same thing that, you know, all of the people who are in their forties and fifties relate to us when we talk about grunge music is I, I think there's always something special when uh, you go back and you listen to the music that was from quote unquote your era and audio slave i think is that for a lot of people who are our age and a lot of people who are maybe you know maybe five to ten years older than us that were teens you know when when the self-titled album came out in 02 i mean it was a big deal i mean rage and soundgarden were two huge bands from the 90s and and the fact that they could they could breathe new life into their creative efforts is something that's really really special because it doesn't always happen that way right <clears throat> so and there's also another side of that where people, it's one of those, just like the Foo Fighters, where you, you learn about Dave Grohl, because we grew up during that area, yeah. or that era, where you learn about Dave Grohl, and then you find out retroactively that they that he was in yeah. Nirvana. So the same thing with Audio Slave. A lot of people knew Chris Cornell from our generation. Like A lot of people knew Audio Slave before they knew that he had... Yeah, you know, Soundgarden, and, well, like, and, and that's the thing. And that's so, it's so a weird thing of, to say for yeah. the people that obviously grew up with it, but like, it's just the way. Well, it, and, 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 and and this is the kind of thing that makes people like big up, big up, really <laughs> mad at us. But like, yeah. this we're just telling you how it is. We can't lie. I mean, I heard Chris Cornell on the radio singing "Black Hole Sun," and I was like, "Holy shit, that's really good." And then you hear a couple of hits from Soundgarden, and then you find out about Temple of the Dog, and then you find out about Audio Slave, and you find out about his solo career and his other collaborations. And I, everybody has their own unique path into the music. And I think for Audio Slave, um, a lot of people who are our age, that might have been their path into Soundgarden. It might have been their path into Temple, and it certainly might have been their path into Rage. And I think any any project that gets you to look deeper and 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 increases the wealth of music that you can appreciate and the music that you turn to that serves as the soundtrack to your life and your and your life's events I, I think that's special and that's important so whatever way you get there you get there and it has an impact on everybody that's individual to that person and i think that's really what it comes down to and that's why we that's why we get together every week and we do this and that's why people go to the page um so i think audio slave um the more i think about it the more important they are because i think they were that vessel for a lot of people who are our age and i know there's a lot of people just like the Foo Fighters, they probably fit 100%. With the, 100%. Right? Audio Slave, Foo Fighters, yeah. Um, them crooked vultures, not nah, yeah. Just I mean, even <laughs> fuck, I mean, like early, early Foos, there's probably a lot of people that got into Sunny Day real estate because of that, yeah. Um, right, so, I right. mean, there's there's so many different tributaries that you can get from following bands or 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 you know, really keying in on one musician and what there they is, can do in one band because a lot yeah. of people are involved in a lot of different projects. Yeah, there is nothing better than, you know, finding a band, finding somebody. And obviously, if you're a musician in your 30s in a band, like, that's not your first band. You know what I mean? You've like, got a so, lot of miles you know, behind you yeah, down the road not, with a lot of different first people. music, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Nirvana wasn't Dave Grohl's first band. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't any yeah. other. Well, it's the same way. I'm sure there's And that's cool. People, that's yeah. awesome. Like, I'm sure there's people out there that, for them, Velvet Revolver was the path into Scott Weiland's work. And, fuck, it might have even been the path into Guns N' Roses for them. You know, well, I wouldn't walk down that path, you know, two paces, but... You know, for somebody that's that's for them, and and everybody's path I think is unique and it's special because it's it's the road that they took, and I think for a lot of us, you know, Audio Slave might have been that. Um, it's funny. Um, one of my uh, one of my favorite musicians, uh, an artist by the name of Julian Baker, who I know we've spoken about on the show, you know, a few times here and there, been a song of the week a couple times. Um, she did a KEXP session in support of her most recent record that came out last year. And she covered Fell on Black Days uh, by Soundgarden. 
And beforehand, she was talking with Cheryl Waters, and she said that exact thing, that when she was a kid, she heard Audio Slave, and she was so inspired by it, and it got her into Soundgarden. And that's, that's exactly awesome. the type of thing we're talking about. I think she's 26 or 27 years old, so basically the same age that we are. Um, and, you know, it got her to appreciate Chris Cornell's work as a songwriter. And, you know, here we are, you know, in modern times, and she's hearkening back to a song that was released in 1994. Um, so I think it's all it's all special. It's all special like that. And I think every every band has a place in somebody's lineage of musical discovery. Uh, so I think I'm excited to talk about that next week and pick out different songs. And uh, yeah, I want to I want to go deeper into it. It's hard. Well, I say yeah. I would say next week we'll we'll definitely have a little bit more background, a little bit more album talk and stuff. So we're getting the general gist of this, so we can keep next week short. I think is what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, uh, my my other, I was gonna branch off and ask you about Rage Against the Machine and be like, yeah, oh, you know, that might have to but, be one of the bands because they're touring I, yeah. right now. They're back. <laughs> they're back, dude. Dude, they're, they're fucking back. They always come back, dude. They all when bands break up, they always come back. They always because everybody back. loves to sell a tour as their last tour. Mm-hmm. Well, right. case in point, Ethan, you don't know this, but uh, next week I'm going to Elton John. Or you, you might know this. I might have told you. You and did, Elton El- John. El- El- Elton John has been on his last tour for like three or four years. Bob Dylan has been on his last never ending tour for like 25 years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it's. it's <laughs> but Grun- This is Grunge Bible's last tour. You know what I mean? Tour. Buy, buy the merch. Buy the merch, become a patron because this is the last year of podcast we're going to do. Yeah. And then you never know when be, it's going to end. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. It's so true. Um, yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, something else music related that I, I kind of want to talk about. Um, this might be a little selfish of me to talk about, but I recently got a new tattoo. That was the next thing I was going to bring up. I was oh, look say, at Parallel Trains. Look yeah. at us. I was going to say, so um, for the people on YouTube, and if you're not, if you're not, if you're just listening on Apple Podcasts or, or Spotify, wherever you listen, yeah, Chris right now is flexing and he has... A beautiful set of glasses on his bi- his right bicep, and uh, Chris, why don't you? I mean, yeah, why don't why don't you give us a just just tell us what it is first, and then maybe I can I'm yeah, ask a few absolutely. burning the burning questions for the people to get a good visual if they're not yeah they're not totally seeing it. Um, so I'll cut to the chase. The tattoo on my the inside of my right bicep pretty much takes up the whole area. It's big. Uh, it's a it's solid a set of tattoo. It's, it's a big tattoo. I'd it's say a it's, solid. Like, it's like eight inches, maybe. It's like eight inches, you know? Um, <laughs> and um, it is, uh, it's it's Mark Lanigan's glasses. Um, so he wore this style of glasses um, for the last several years of his life. I'd say, I don't know, maybe from like 2012 until, until the time of his death. And, um, you know, I, it's no secret around these parts that I love Mark Lanigan. Um, he, he might be my favorite, favorite, artist musician writer of all time he's done all of those things he did all of those things and um you know he passed away in february and 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 that affected me and his music has been so special to me um the last you know three years of my life and i wanted to have a reminder and have a memory of him that i could carry with me that was more significant than just kind of the the songs that i like and um i decided um i probably decided a few months ago that i wanted to get uh get his glasses just kind of like a subtle subtle thing that nobody would know when they saw it. But, um, you know, if you ask, you know, I, I, I will say, but, um, yeah, so I went in, uh, a week ago today, um, last Friday and I got these, I got this piece done and, um, I'm really happy with how it came out. And, um, it's one of those, one of those works that, uh, is just special to me. And it's just a nice reminder for, uh, me specifically with what Mark's music, uh, has done for me and, and continues to do for me. And also just kind of a reminder of, of music and and what art can do for you. I mean, it can, it can, it can punctuate the best times in your life and it can help, you know, shine a light in the hardest times in your life. And Mark's music certainly did the latter, but it, you know, it does the former for me too. And and it's something that's really special to me. So I wanted to, to carry it with me. So I'm really happy to have this on my body. Um, I think my, my artist did a fantastic job uh, and it came together perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a really good piece. I, I can't wait to see it in person. Totally. Um, it seems like it has, it has like, obviously you see the front side of the glasses and then you actually see the, what are they called? The, 
the le- uh, that was the thing I was talking with my artist. I don't know what those are called. The things that yeah. go on the side of your head. Yeah, the um, thing that hold the hold them to your head. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah the, 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 the the ear things. It's got yeah. those. It's got those yeah. folded behind. It's got a little <laughs> little detail in the in the uh, in the lenses. I know what those are called. Those are called lenses. Right, right, right. right. And um, yeah, it's just it's just a really special piece. And I'm I'm a big fan of tattoos. That like if a stranger right. or some random person were to look at it, they're not going to really know what it means because I don't know. I, I my opinion with tattoos like. I don't really like it when people Let's ask. Let's get into it. Let's get into yeah. it. I don't like when people ask, oh, like, what is that? Or like, why did you get that? Because it's, I don't like, it's not I on don't, your fucking body. It's on mine. I know what it means. I don't like when they, when they, yeah, when they start the conversation, it's like, what's the meaning? Like, wh- why? Yeah. Because that means It's kind that of personal. It's, it, 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 there's prejudice behind it. It's not like. There totally is. It's just start with like, hey, man, that's an awesome piece of art. It makes you look right. badass. Like, yeah. is there a reason behind it? Right. And then you can be like. Yeah, there actually is. And then I'm so much more inclined to talk about it. Yes. Rather than like, oh, what is that? Why did you get that? And, and it's funny. So I have, you don't have to validate have, anything. No, to anybody. like I have I have this one. And like, depending on the person, like what, I, what I've decided I'm going to say with this one is like, uh, I'm just going to say something super vague, like a friend of mine passed away and he used to wear these glasses, which in a way it's true. I mean, he was a friend of mine. <laughs> you ever tell um, a lie just for the, just, <laughs> just for the hell of it. Just well, for the, the same thing. That's you the know, same to make thing. the story oh, fit. Over here. <laughs> Over here, yeah. I have I have porch tattooed on my right rib cage. The word porch um, for the Pearl Jam song right. because that's you know one of the seminal songs for me. And I was out at the beach um, on Fourth of July, and so many people were coming up to me like, "The fuck? Why do you have porch on? You know, why is porch on your body?" And I just get tired of I just get tired of saying it. So most of the time, depending on my you know. My, my headspace, usually I'll just say it's important and then just stop the conversation. Um, I do have this elaborate um, elaborate lie because I am a liar that I will tell from time to time about it that makes kind of like, you know, when someone asks you about something that's a sensitive topic and they don't realize it's a sensitive topic and then you explain it to them and they're like, oh, wow, like, I'm sorry. I was I was kind of like forward about that. Um, I, I have a story that I tell about that. That's that's not true. Um and <laughs> do you want to, do you want to tell it? Yeah, hell yeah, I'll All tell right. it. So let's, obviously- let, let's, reenact, let's reenact this. So, so me and Chris, we're both on the beach, 4th of July. I see. Hey man, uh, what's that on your side of your, you know, side of your body? Does that say porch? Like why? Yeah, it's, it's important. And then normally they're like, well, why is it important? <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Like, but like, it's just words. <laughs> yeah. It's just, word. yeah, it's words. So basically, um, I was very close with my grandfather who passed away and we used to always get together and just talk about life on, on his porch, on his back porch. And it always used to start, um, we would just be sitting inside and then he would always just look at me and say porch and I'd say porch. And then we'd go outside and we'd, we'd sit down and we'd talk about life. That's not true at all. My grandfather is very much alive. Oh, um, that's he's very so healthy, good. but that's what porch? I say because, yeah, because then they're like, Oh wow. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, like I didn't mean to, to do that because I don't know. I, people just need a, a check. Sometimes I think tattoos are personal. Um, it's like, like the one over here that I have of the Goodwill hunting boat on, on my left, my left boob, I guess. Um, which we can see because we're shirtless. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, it's just they mean something. They obviously mean something to the person who has it on their body. So um, I, I tend to I tend to shy away from asking people. I normally just compliment the art and leave it at that. And if they want to tell me, they will tell me because I've I've started the conversation. But I'm not going to be like, well, why did you get that, dude? I love. I actually love that story. That fake story that you tell. Um, oh, I thought about this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I thought porch, about this. Yeah, porch. I I actually really like. Yeah. You know, for you know, that sounds be, real. That's my truth. You know, for yeah. your for that tattoo for you. <laughs> Damn that's right. What I'm gonna believe. That's incredible. I mean, but it's true. I mean, you could you could easily tie that back to our time in Pittsburgh. We'd spend a lot of time. See, of, there we go. Three, 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 I, have, nine, I have an I have an A porch. story and a B story. It's great. Yeah, and then we, the C story, they all merge together. Yeah, the, the, we would all hang out on the porch of Myron, and we would listen to music. We listened to release. We listened to. A lot of the band, the last waltz, yeah. we, like we talk about this music on the porch and um, on the porch. Yeah, we'd have we had our you know we had our first cigarette out there. We had our we first did, yeah. We had our, we had our first beer together. We had yeah. our first you know black and mild. We had a lot of we, firsts. We, we together. had our last beer of that year out there. We we had a lot of firsts and lasts out there. And 
Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. And even even the the, the fabricated story that I just shared with with you, um, it has there's some, some truth. Tr- there's some yeah, truth. There's some to truth it. to that. There's I mean, I hang out with it. my grandfather on the porch. I just did it last week. I we go out there, and uh, you know, he's he's getting older now. So you know, when I was younger, he used to man the grill, and I'll go out and I'll grill, and we'll hang out, and uh, you know, we'll eat, we'll go inside, we'll eat, and then we'll go outside to clean the grill, and we always just end up sitting down and just talking about stuff. And I think those are those are important times when. You know, you get together with someone that you really care about and that you love and, and you're you're kind of talking about nothing at all. But it's it, it means more. It means more than the conversation that's happening at that time. And um, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not small talk. It's no. it's like it's just good, good talk. You know, yeah, like it's, it's just, all it, it all it all comes together. So um, I, I, I think um, nothing I hate more than small talk, you know, oh, dude, everybody Why? hates Every, everybody everything's hates everything's already been said. Everybody hates it. Everybody says they hate it, but then they act, they still, you know. Go on. With I, it. I have to tell you. So my 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 full time job. I work from home. Um, I work in digital media. And my favorite thing about working from home um, is the fact I don't have to do the small talk thing. I don't have to yeah. walk into the office and you know be like, oh hey Diane, like how was your weekend? Oh man, it went went too fast. I can't believe it's already Monday again. Yeah. Oh me either, <laughs> Diane. You know, like, I just I, I just I, I just I, I worked in an office for one year. I worked in, well thirteen months. So I'm a liar again. Um, I had my fill for a lifetime. I don't want to do it again. Um, I definitely can't do it again. So I'm, I'm a work from homer for as long as I can possibly do it. And um, you have incredible flexibility. I mean, like like nobody else I know. I feel. Yeah, it's great. Hey, you're well, killing I was, I was it. Ta- you're I, was killing it. I was talking to one of my coworkers uh, the other the other day. Uh, we both started this job at the same time. We do very similar jobs for my company, and um, we were talking about that and just like the work life balance that I have, and it really has gives us the ability to take part in experiences that we otherwise couldn't, because if we want a road trip or something, you know, you can still get work done because you work wherever you are. As long as you have an internet connection. He said, he's like, you know, I try to keep reminding myself periodically that I'm in my good old days right now and I'm able to do things. And, and this was like a Thursday after this was yesterday. I was, I was talking, <laughs> oh, man. I was like, you just, you went, in, you went <laughs> yeah, into I was like, it. I was, like, into it. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, dude. Like you're totally right. Um, and, and ever since then, this happened yesterday, and, and since then, I've been in a very contemplative and uh, nostalgic mood where just, like, everything that you think about just seems like it matters a little bit more in that moment. Because in the grand, in all reality, it does. Um, you know, kind of in your day-to-day, you forget, you know, that that's your life, and it's happening. So you gotta, you, you should be doing things that matter, and you should be enjoying yourself, and you should get tattoos for things that matter, and you should have conversations with people that matter and, and share, share things with people that matter. And that's really what it's all about. And I, I think that's at the crux of our podcast and that's at the crux of our friendship. And that's at the crux of, I think who we are. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I think that I love having those conversations where you bring up the good old days that are happening right now and you can have moments and you can have realizations that you you're you're going to look back at these memories yeah. you know of the time that we oh yeah man we did like we did three years of podcasting in a row like i can't believe we did that that was so you know whatever you know yeah. we like have those have this random like you know it feel whatever it feels like right now it's going to feel we're going to look back at it totally different in 10 years things um, always no things always what. seem yeah things always seem to matter a little bit more once they're finished of than course. when you're doing them and it's, and it's a hard thing to be cognizant of when it's happening of and course. I, I i don't think i'm very good at that um because i just try to like no you're live. pretty good at you're you're fine yeah i think i, I mean, think, I think my, you my are brain doesn't turn off so inevitably like you'll get home from a great night with your friends and like you'll be sitting in bed getting ready for bed at like 2 30 and you're like wow like this is like well i think the, it's about i think the you know the way you know that you are cognizant is because you keep doing it Right. You yeah. don't stop. You, you keep having yeah, those right. good and, times. And you, yeah. and you do, you do the same thing too. Yeah. Um, you have and to. Ethan, and I, uh, think I have that... to, yeah, I have to segue here. Well, not segue, but add something to the conversation that you're going to laugh at initially, but just bear with me. Um, so there, there is a Kenny Chesney song. Oh, here we go. Hold on. <laughs> here we well, go. I got to crack okay. a beer for this one. Yeah, we need this. Yeah. You're going to need this, but, um, there's a Kenny Chesney song that came out, I think when I was in college or maybe when I was a senior in high school. So right around like the pinnacle or, I mean, everything's the pinnacle. It still is. But like when you reach your first period of like, holy shit, like things matter. Um, and the song was called till it's gone. And like, it was, it was basically about all this stuff. And like, Ever since I heard that song, like my 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 love for country has gone dormant, and I think it's dead. I used to love it. Um, 
I'm recovering. I'm sober for a while from it, but I'm um, recovering just, addict. Yeah. Just like the sentiment of that. Like, yeah, like any situation you're in, like you, you drink that up until it's, until it's not there anymore. Like you get everything out of it that you can. And then, and then, and then you think about how much it matters because it's hard to, you know, give everything you can and experience everything to its fullest extent. If you're also thinking about like, wow, this is really important. Um, but I think we, we had a good introduction to that when we were in Pittsburgh for a year and we all knew we were leaving a couple of months before we ended up leaving. Uh, I was, and, yeah. We knew. Yeah. I think, I think we navigated that perfectly. I mean, we're still, we're still talking about it and it's the foundation that lifelong friendships are built on. Yeah, it, it is when you know when the end is coming and when the end is near, you definitely have, you know, you, you, you can change your mind mindset to like allow for those conversations and those realizations. And it's usually really special. Um, I think one thing I want to say, so you, you have two, I guess, music tattoos on your body. I have one as well. I have an album album yeah. cover for the front bottoms, mm -hmm. um, and I actually share it with a friend. And most of my tattoos are shared with friends, and yeah. we actually don't have... We, we need to get one. We don't have a tattoo. Yeah, we don't have one that um, exactly the same on each other. And I think that's going to, you know, that's definitely going to come, um, you know, sooner than later. I have a feeling yeah. September maybe, is going to be... Maybe in L.A., yeah, I think September is going to be it when we go see the tribute show um, for Taylor Hawkins. But yeah. <clears throat> there's something about something about sharing tattoos also that I love. And one of my actually, so me and my friend got this tattoo. We saw the front bottoms last year in, um, in Nashville, October. right? Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Nashville. And um, believe it or not, so I, you know, obviously I train and I, I go to physical therapy usually once a week and. One of the guys that I'm with, Andrew Darwin, he is. I love just a, Andrew. Yeah, he's the man, and he uh, he gets it. You know, he's just like, he's a good guy. He just he like loves working with us because it's you know it's a good endeavor. He just like wants to you know good people, whatever. And um, you know, he wanted to get a tattoo, and he was talking about getting a knife or something. I was like, oh, I have a knife on my body, and I showed him. He's like, dang. He's like, that's really awesome, and. You know, he's listening to the front. We actually, I bought tickets. They're coming to Birmingham in October, and I bought tickets. I bought four tickets. So there's one available, Chris, if you'd like to come. Yeah, there's one available. That because him my and, ears up. Yeah, him and him and his wife are in, plus me, and they have an extra because you always buy an extra. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're going to see them. But he ended up, he actually got, it was a cover-up. He had, he had some Roman numerals or some small, tat, uh, small tattoo on his bicep. But he got the same tattoo... Um, as I, cause he was like, he was like, I don't want to get the same one as you. I was like, Hey man, I was like, why not? I was like, let's, yeah. I was like, dude, let's be connected forever. Get the same tattoo. I was yeah. like, ideas I, aren't proprietary. Like I was that, like, unless you know? we're in the same, I was like, no one's for, mine's on my, um, my left thigh kind of right. high up. So like no yeah. one's going to see that. So even if we're together, no one's going to be like, Oh, you guys have the same. And if people and say that, did, who the fuck even, cares? Who's going to, who's going to really be like, Oh you yeah. Guys who really cares? Have the same. Kick their ass. And I'm like, I'm like of course we do because we're we're best buds. We had a really good, you know, five years together. And like, yeah. God forbid, I want to like memori memorialize it and have one together. So I think getting tattoos with friends is all. It is really it's all the validation you need. It's it's the only you know, it's the only thing you need if you want to get. Something well, that's in the thing. Mind. And a lot of people are like, oh well, what if I fall out of you know fall out of the friendship with that person, or we just grow apart? But it's still important because that just period because, of time, yes, that period like of that, time, that when you were in time. when you were together, when you yeah, it's like yeah, and 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 like there's like a weird thing too, like you know when when friendships end or, or relationships end, like in time, like I think you can always eventually realize that like you know somebody might not be important to you now or might not be a part of your life now but there was a point in time where they were and 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 that was important and and, and yeah. in one way or another it, it helped make you who you are and you had good experiences not, nothing's say, all bad it's not all bad i'll say it dude i mean if you break up with somebody like just because you broke up on whatever terms doesn't mean that it was like all for nothing i hate when people are like yeah, yeah. Like, like i just wasted three years of my life i'm like yeah. really i was like you were happy for three years yeah, or was, two years you know, and I mean, ten like, months. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people will kill for that. You know, yeah. you know, I was like, no, exactly. dude, you were you were in a great, you were in a great spot. You had somebody like, mm -hmm. okay, it didn't work out. That sucks. That is yeah. hard. But to say that it was all for nothing is like, is not a good outlook. Like, you got to be, you got to take, you know, the good times for what they are, yeah. and really like, 
Well, there's, there's people, that. you know, really people, look back and like admire. Yeah. That. And, and there, there's people who come into your life that for some reason or another, maybe aren't meant to be there forever, you know, right. a, f- a friend, whoever. Um, but that, you know, the fact that they leave or, or things, things change and you grow apart. It, I don't think it, it doesn't discount the fact that they were there and they were important to you no. at the time. Um, so I think, you know, if you're thinking about getting a tattoo with, with one of your pals or a significant, whatever, you, whatever it is, I think you should do it because, you know, if they're important to you currently that you want to do that they're on some level or another, that, that importance is always going to remain. That has, that has staying power like that. Yeah. It, that should be enough. Yeah. So, so basically if you're out there and you have a good idea for Chris and I to get a certain yeah. tattoo, um, I think it's time that we start brainstorming yeah. our tattoo together. I think um, so. We are going to be on the road. I feel like I feel like maybe we do something with a road or like do something yeah. with a road trip type of like or thing just like because ITFA in the flood again. <laughs> yeah, we on, on my back just like yeah. massive, <laughs> a massive the, wave. The whole lyrics to into the, the to wood. <laughs> oh my that gosh! Would be, yeah, that would be extensive. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I we definitely need to get one. Um, but all, all of those fears that people have, I, I have none of those fears with you. Um, you know, we'll be we'll be friends until one of us dies, and we'll still be friends after that. Yeah. Who do you think is gonna die first? <laughs> I so I have a really funny story about this, and I know this oh, episode's man, going on go. a little bit longer. We said a quick twenty minutes, and here we yeah. are, forty nine minutes in. <laughs> yeah, oh, easy, easy forty nine. Easy forty nine. So when I was a kid, I was like seven or eight years old, and one day randomly, I just went up to my mom and I said, "You know, mom." I don't think I'm going to live a very long life. And that alarmed her to no end, obviously, because eight-year-olds don't say that to their parents. Um, That's crazy. For some reason, I said that to my mom. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I hope I'm wrong. Um, I hope I live a while. But I don't know. Based off of that, I think I might be the first to go. What what is a long life to you? Well, that's man? the thing. At eight years old, a long life might have been thirty, but I'm you know I'm going to be twenty six in September, so <laughs> I got I got you know I'm running out of time by that regard. I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you What do you want to live to? Oh fuck! I want to. I want to. Do you want to get as, to a hundred? I think it would be cool, but not if I'm a vegetable. Um, yeah, I would say obviously it's a big yeah. like. And I, I think it, I think the answer the answer is always going to be like <laughs> longer than I am now. You know. Yeah. Uh, hope, hopefully. I mean, I hope to. I want to see know, tomorrow, of course. Yeah. You know, see tomorrow. I want to. I want to. Want to have kids someday. I want to raise yeah. a family. All those things. Amen so, to that. Yeah. Who Who knows, man? We'll see. But uh, you know, as long as as long as these tickers are still ticking, we'll be uh, we'll be right Cheers here to that, together. Chris. Cheers to Cheers. that, man. Drink That's up. Good. That's really good. Okay. Oh, so that's great. I think the last thing we'll talk about before we give our songs of the week and uh, say our goodbyes. Um, Chris, you said this earlier in the pod. You were talking about, obviously, giving your, giving your home computer cancer because you were downloading music illegally. Yep, absolutely. So what was, what was your drug of choice? And I'm referring to how did you download your music back when iTunes, Spotify, when, like, when it wasn't so easy to stream music. So how yep. did you corrupt your family computer? <laughs> so I'll tell you my path in, uh, I created my iTunes account because there were two songs that I heard on the radio that I wanted to download. And the first one was Feel Good Inc. by Gorillaz. Um, and the second hell one yeah. was... Yeah, hell, hell yeah, yeah, bro. Hell, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I love the that. Gorillaz. I was, like, I was like, I don't know what this is, but I fucking want it. And I, I was had like a, blown away when I heard about the yeah, Gorillaz great. and like and, what and like, they did. I, had, I couldn't decipher the lyrics. Like, I didn't know how to find what it was. Somehow I had Feel to find good it. Feel Good Inc., dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the second one was All Summer Long by Kid Rock. Um, oh, all and, right. And, Kid Rock. And, yeah, and I had, I had been gifted a... Um, an iPod Nano Christmas of 05, I think. I got it from, I think it was my parents at the time. It wasn't Santa Claus. I was, I was nine. So oh, he's hopefully not real, it wasn't. So. Yeah, he's not real. Fuck him. Uh, so Saint I Nic- want Saint Nicotine is Saint real. Saint Nicotine is, he's, he's totally, he's <laughs> totally Santa- real, boys and girls. But, um, you know, Chris Kringle, I don't know. The jury's out. I haven't seen him. But anyway, so those are the two songs I wanted. So I downloaded them. I created an iTunes account and I bought them for 99 cents a piece. And then I was like, fuck, man, I'm nine years old. I don't have, I don't have money to spend. <laughs> Two dollars. <laughs> I, I don't have a stream of income. I, I like my I definitely don't was, have a credit card to put in there. No, my allowance was like seven bucks a week or something. Like yep. I'm 
not. Minus I don't two. Have to minus two dollars. <laughs> yeah, Dave. I don't have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have the type of up. capital. I don't have the capital to do that. So obviously, I went looking for different ways. And you know how you always have those kids in your class who are on the cutting edge of certain things, like whether it be technology, whether it be curse words, whether it be like sexual things that they come curse in and talk words. to you about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, I I went to like the person who was like the the music person in my school. I was like like Hey man, like how do, how do I how do I get this stuff? And he was like, he's like, I'll, I'll show I'll show you what you got to do. You got to download LimeWire. So I was a LimeWire guy through and through. And yes, I did crash my family's computer. I gave it a virus, but um, you know, it it recovered from that. And um, I continued to use LimeWire for a number of years until uh, I I think pretty much until I reverted back to uh, iTunes. And then additionally, I would just get a bunch of CDs and rip them onto my. Uh, Rip, I burn yeah, them. rip the CDs. I, I burn, burn them. them. Yeah. So burn I was them. I was a li- I was a LimeWire guy, and uh, mm-hmm. our um our gateway desktop in like 2007 crashed because of it. What about Dude, you? Bur- yeah, burning CDs, man. What it's a, a lost, lost art. What a lost art. That's exactly what I was gonna <laughs> say, dude. No, nothing better than having. Uh, we had. I had a music guy. I had a music. Actually, the singer in my band, Sam Culp, and he had. Yep. You know, I don't know if he got them for Christmas for his birthday, but he had. All the the yeah, beautiful, uh, great CDs, all the new ones that came out for the bands we will listen to, the used, you know, Panic of the Disco, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever mm-hmm. we listen to on the bus. Um, and I would borrow a lot of them and burn them and put them on my library that way. And I was scared to death of, uh, you know, crashing my parents' computers. So yeah, that's a, my, that's a big deal. You don't I'm have money to sure pay for that. My brother, my brother Quinn definitely used uh lime wire to get a lot of music yeah but we were we were like we were kind of a, along the path of <laughs> oh twisted the twisted t is coming yeah, the, out for the, chris the, the twee is out the twee so <laughs> um we were definitely along the uh, i was along the lines of you know if if somebody else had the music and they could give me a flash drive full of flash drive music yep. or CD, like that yep. would be and we had it i had a um we had a music teacher that gave me just like gigabytes of music and oh, shout yeah. out uh, actually i brought i said this to you and i don't, we actually didn't talk about it but i i competed last week in pennsylvania and my yes. my, my cousin like i'm so i'm 27 cousin my, chad right cousin cousin chad my yeah, cousin chad him. is cousin chad is 50 years old so he is like my you know my dad's side he's like my dad is like 17 years younger than one of his brothers who had Chad. So like, yeah. and um, he's a big fish guy and he gave me a, a, he gave me a flash drive with, I forget the exact number, but two, cause he told me it was like 274 soundboard audios of live fish shows from Jesus now back Christ. to, back to 2000, uh, back to 2012, about 10 years. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, and you know he he bought a bunch because you can buy them, but then you can also get them from a different website. But anyway, so I, I I definitely went through the you know the friend and the different like people like whoever could give it to me, and it would be like risk free basically. Yep. And I did a little bit of LimeWire, or there was yeah, it was a little bit of LimeWire, but then I also used there was a, a YouTube converter that you could yep you could YouTube download MB three. Yeah, YouTube to MB3 and I used I used that one a lot actually. Thank yeah. you for reminding me of that. But that was, that was so so time consuming. You could yeah. not there was no way to bulk like no, you had to it copy was one and paste. at a time, and then you had to edit yes. the title and everything yes, if you wanted yes, to be a stickler. Yes, exactly. I used to do you the to, album, the artist, the genre, all that. If you shit. wanted, a, if you wanted a picture for the album, if oh, you didn't fuck. want, if you didn't yeah, want the musical, do, if you didn't want the quarter note or, or yep. the eighth note, I did yes. all of that. So I, I did a I did a lot of that where. Yeah, I was just trying to pull from shoot, you know, YouTube. You know, YouTube was there for me when I needed yeah. it most. Um, yeah. So I, I did that. I did that for a long time, but mainly I, I feel like I, I like burning CDs was a lot of fun. Nothing mm. better than nothing better than getting a mix from say oh, yeah. you know a significant other that was like, hey, I made this CD for you. Like, here's twelve songs that yeah. I think you would like. And you're like, holy shit. And then they wrote, you know, they obviously came with a piece. It was like a, a blank CD with a, a clear case. And they put a piece of index paper underneath yep. it with, with the song titles. Mm-hmm. and all. That. Maybe and, a little uh, note if you're lucky. Yeah, if, yeah, if you're lucky, exactly. And, yeah. and man, 
Oh, hey, those, dude, those, those are the good old days. Those you never know you when you're in the good old days now until I, they're gone. Yeah, now you just now you just share via you know text Spotify. message Spotify. Yeah, yeah, put them on Instagram because you think people care about what you're posting. Um, wow, what a trip down memory lane. Yeah, That's so great. I mean, I mean, I guess I I think that it's a lot better the way it is now because. I don't, I don't feel like I'm stealing from artists anymore. Yeah. I mean, Spotify is theft from artists, but we're right. going to have to, we're going to have to talk about that at some yeah. point. Yep. Yeah, when we get it, yeah, we'll talk to artists about it and we'll, we'll talk yeah. about it. And yeah. We'll have a nice little round table. Have strong opinions when it comes time, but, uh, we have, we have strong opinions about everything. Yeah. It's great. I mean, of course it's, you know, it's good. It gets their music out. So it's a lot more accessible than what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. It's such but, robbery though. It's no good. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, we did it once again. We said we were going to go 20, 30 minutes. I think we're an hour deep now, give or take a couple of minutes. But um, if you're still with us, thank you so much for checking us out. Um, apologies for not giving the full Audio Slave episode, but some things you got to wait for. And uh, right. next week, we expect that episode 71 will be all things Audio Slave. Um, we hope you enjoyed the appetizer and all of the random superfluous uh tributaries and tangents that we went on this episode um if you want to support us you already know how to do all that the patreon the merch uh leave a nice review on apple Podcasts so we can uh we can bury or not that, uh, so nice or, or not, not. So yeah nice i mean that's yeah. fun it's it's material it's all good it's all, yeah, good. all news all news is good news uh in, in in the grunge bible sphere so whatever you feel the need to do go ahead and do that um additionally I'd like to thank Drew McFadden, our our steadfast producer. Uh, Drew has requested that we have multiple camera angles for this setup. I have mine today, Ethan. Not so lucky. So sorry, Drew, for that. Um, yep, I I, I almost I, attempted I have mine to set right it over up. there. Hopefully, it all works out and you can get that. Um, but if not, we'll try again. Yep, I was gonna say I, I I attempted. I put it up. And I said it, but it just got me. It was like me slumped over, and it was like not a good angle. So yeah, it's it's it. tough. It's they think it's easy. If it was well, so I easy, I'd like to see them try. Well, I was looking for my tripod. Yeah, um, I don't have a tripod. I have books. I know. Yeah, I know. That's what Drew said. He said just just use books. Fuck, so fuck said, it, man. Not, if it's so Go easy, boy. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Eight year olds, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I um yeah, it's just one. It's just one. <laughs> yeah. one angle for me but it's all yeah. good hey the classic angle that's that's what we're here yeah, for yeah, we, the get, classic the, we get the full-on frontal <laughs> nudity <laughs> it's, it's all that they want oh um, dude all right we let's are, uh let's yeah let's get out of here let's get some yeah. song of the weeks in here before all right we, i'm gonna uh, let you i'm gonna road. let you go i'm gonna let you go first just right. just in case yeah um because i have two i have two prepared i have two okay. really good songs so I had, that struck I, me this week that's fantastic. I had one coming in. Um, it was an album that was actually released today on July 22nd. It's not going to be my song of the week, but I would like to I'd like to mention it. Um, there's a rock band called Beach Bunny, and they just released an oh, album yeah. called yep. uh, Emotional Creature. And uh, it's the last song of the album uh, called Love Song. And it's a callback to the first song on the album called Entropy, I think. Um, I love I love when bands do that. Um, Beach Bunny they have no bad songs. All of their songs are fucking perfectly written. They're so catchy. The melodies are great. Uh, I post a story about them, actually. Um, I think you should check it out, but it's not going to be my song of the week. Um, I had, um, when we were talking about kind of all things nostalgia and whatnot, I had a change of heart regarding my song of the week. Um, and it was a song that I listened to today. As I said, the last couple of days, I've kind of been in that reflective mindset and this song came uh, came to the forefront of my mind when we were having that, and I'm changing my song of the week to it. Um, so my song of the week is going to be by an artist named Jack Kays, and the song is called Middle of the End, How Does It Feel? And um, it's just a really, really great song, and it speaks about a lot of the things that we talked about on this podcast. And um, kind of like the, the last portion of the song, he just kind of repeats, how does it feel to be stuck in the middle of the ending? Um, and it's kind of like a lot of song. It's, it's, it's the whole song is about kind of like a, a relationship and like the ups and downs. And I think there's some like some drugs in there and whatnot. But it's it's a really, really catchy song. But the part that sticks with me is the end where you just keep singing. How does it feel to be stuck in the middle of the ending? And I don't know. It's it's tough to explain how that feels when you know it. And I know I think all of us have been there. Um, and it's a great song that, you know, it doesn't answer the question directly, but it certainly it it makes you feel all those things that you felt at those times when you are in the middle of an ending. And um, yeah, it's just it's special for that reason. So that's going to be my song of the week. I, I think it's really good. It's kind of got some nice acoustic guitar in there and um, yeah, it's a, it's a great fast tempo song that kind of makes you think. 
That's awesome. I've actually I've never heard that one. Yeah, um, I think I think I, Ethan, I, I think you'll you. like it. You'll really like it. I'm just saying, I don't think I've ever heard you talk about it, so I'm excited. No, yeah, it's it's it's. An, I forget where I where I discovered it from. It was on it was on my playlist. I think like last fall or maybe this past winter or something. But it just came back to me today when I was kind of thinking about nostalgic stuff. And um, it's it's definitely um, to me it sounds more like an Ethan song than a Chris song. Um, so I think I think you'll like it. I oh think heck you really yeah! Will. So hopefully that's everyone great. everyone likes it. It'll everyone likes it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's not, it's just not for you, but yeah, it's okay. we, know, we, we know enough about that. What about you? Well, yeah, I was going to say, so obviously it's nice because it goes on the playlist that if, if you guys like, I mean, Chris posts um, a lot, you, you're a playlist guy, so you put a lot of playlists out love there playlists. and I love, I, I love that. I really do. I love sharing music more than just a song, um, you know, kind of sharing a culmination of a feeling and, yeah. uh, you know, the songs of the week for us are... They're very, you know, they're all very current. It's always yeah. like what we're listening to right then and there in our life. Yeah, it's a nice time capsule. Yeah, it is. So this this playlist that we built is extremely eclectic, and um, you should definitely go and check it out. Um, I, I think the I'm, coolest I'm thing for me, yeah, the coolest thing for me, just about like the song of the week playlist. It's kind of like a a roadmap to our head spaces over the last year and a half. Um, and I don't think I realized that it was going to be that. Um, but here we, you know, we sit 70 episodes deep and I'm sure I could look back chronologically in this order and, and kind of remember why I chose certain songs or what was happening in my life. So that's, that's a really, really cool thing. I think that's why everybody should kind of keep a running tally of certain songs from certain points in their life. It's a, uh, it's powerful stuff, but yeah, anyways, let's, let's hear what you have. Yeah, I'm 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 stuck between two, and I'm sure you could, you know exactly which two I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> oh, I man, know, this I know is one so of them. Tough. You know what, Ethan? Put two of them on there. We'll we'll go two for two. We'll I'll do love song in middle of the end, and then you'll well, do. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll do one for one for just me, and then we're gonna have a joint song of the week. Okay, that sounds good. Say, I like that. So I'll, I'll do I'll do the one that is this one is just a solo song of the week and. It's called United States of Whatever by Liam Lynch. Yep. And um, my boss, he, so it was like seven o'clock in the morning a couple of days ago, and he started explaining the song to me because I asked him something. He said, "Yeah, whatever." And I was like, "I was weird." And he's like, "You ever heard that song about Liam?" Liam Lynch talks about. It. He's like, "You know, it's back in the alleyway, and a girl said, What's up?'" And I said, "Yeah, whatever." And <laughs> and like I'm like, you know, he's explaining this and saying, just saying, "Yeah, whatever," the whole time, and I have no yeah. idea what's going on. You're like, what the fuck's going so on? So then, here? so then we get in the truck, and he plays the song, and it literally is like two two and a half minutes, and it's just this dude kind of talking, and he and he is saying scenarios of him doing something and then saying, yeah, whatever. Like, Oh, cop pulled me over. He said, Hey, you're going too fast. Said, yeah, whatever. And it's like, it's just this kind of like rebellious, pop, like punk song. And it's hilarious. And it was just so yeah, funny. It's, it's, and it's I, really good. I like yeah, it a lot. It's so funny. And I just think like, Drew's like, Hey man, can you guys get two camera views? They're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <And> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just love it because that's what you want to say to people sometimes. You're like, yeah, whatever, yeah, like whatever, man. Like, like stop it. talking. Yeah, yeah. like, keep, like it on. keep it. Rolling. I'm trying. Like, I'm back. It. I'm back in the alleyway. I'm throwing dice with Leroy, and then somebody says something. Like, yeah, whatever. So, um, it's a really, it's a really fun song, and it's just yeah, like it is. Fun. It has that like it has that angst to it that yeah. um, we all look for. Um, but the other song that I sent to you, and another one that me and Brian were listening to in the truck is from a band that I have seen and I love. I know our producer, Drew McFadden, loves. Um, and then one of the other um, members, Adam Pellicotti, in my band back in the day, he also like loves the 1975. They have a song called um, Part of the Band. It's one of their new singles that yep. came out about a month ago, I believe. I think so, yeah. And it is just... it is So it's different than if they're i guess if they're if you've never listened to them their music for the first few albums were maybe like you know synthesized electronic kind of pop a little bit of rock and just i don't know 80s inspired maybe or mid 80s 90s and 
um, you know, really good. But this this one's different. This one's really different, and it has this kind of like it's not folk, but it has like it's very lyrical driven, yeah. and it's about his life in a, a a big way. And they talk about a, he talks about a lot of different stuff, and he talks about being sober, and it's just so. Like it's just a, it's just such a good song, and it has such a good like click to it, and a good, um, you know, har- you know, rhythm to it. And I just, I don't know, I just love it. And I sent it to you. I knew, I knew you were gonna like it. I knew yeah. it was gonna be right up your alley. I put it, on, I put it on my story. You put it on your story, and I was like, <laughs> dude, this song, this song just slaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just yeah, like it's the handshake emoji right there. Um, I have to say, it's one of those songs because you showed it to me. It's one of those songs that kind of makes you stop doing whatever it is that you're doing. And like for those three, four, five minutes, like you're just listening to that song and not every song does that. And, no. and that was one for me. It really, I was like, wow, this is, um, this is a, this is a big song. This is a, uh, song that makes you think. Yeah. It's one that I, I listened to. Like, I mean, I put it on repeat. I listened, we listened to it like two times in a row in the truck and I listened to it like two times later. Like I listened, kind to, of, like, like, let it I listened to it a lot today. Yeah. Yeah, you just like let it roll and it's just like it's a beautiful song and like yeah. at the end of it um he says, you know, the one of the last lyrics is like I haven't picked up in 1470 days and 62 hours. It's kind of my iteration, babe. And it's, you know, he's been clean from, you know, cocaine and heroin for you know, yeah. a little over 3 years and it's awesome. You know, it's it's like it's like such a cool different side you know, and you have the people making music when they're, you know, in distress. And then you have the people, the same people making music outside of it. And they get yeah. to look back and it's, you get to see those different sides. And it's a great song. Yeah. It's, it's really, just, it's, really good. It's so honest and transparent and vulnerable, which I think um, it happens a lot in art. And I think it's a good lesson for us, you know, for all of us that we can all be, I think, more honest and and transparent and vulnerable with our lives and um i mean hell if <laughs> if he can do it <laughs> for all of us yeah. then we can do it for the people that are around us and yeah man that is a fantastic song and i appreciate you sharing it with me earlier this week and it's affected me and, and now i'm grateful that we can share it with everybody else yeah that's awesome so go that's great listen to those three songs yeah. and uh follow if you want to, it's all, they're on the playlist if you you know, if you can't, yeah. we'll link that sucker up like again. To. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna throw it on the, I was gonna put it on the grunge bible. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put it on my personal first, just in case, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pilot, the soft launch, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. the soft launch, yeah. yeah. Not, it's not, ready for not all. too many hits, not too many hits from it. No one <laughs> yeah. said like, oh, I love this song, yeah. but uh, it's coming. It's I put, coming. I put on mine. I had a bunch of people reply like, holy shit, I love Did this you? song. Yeah, oh, yeah, hell like, yeah. I like, yeah, I had a bunch of people that were like, yeah, this is great. I was like, that's yeah, that's a win. Your followers are way more responsive than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I don't know, man. Oh, uh, last last note before we send off. Um, I sent this to you. So my roommate, Curtis, he made the final in the uh, world cha- the track and field world championships. Yeah, big Kurt. And, yep. And he's he's really, you know, he's an awesome, awesome roommate, awesome guy. He's really motivational. He's, like, a, he's a really great guy. Yeah, he makes me feel, you know, I'm very inspired right now for a lot of reasons and um you know we i've been joking with him because he's he's been kind of he's read around hovering around nine thousand ninety five hundred followers and uh you know he had a really big meet last week or two weeks ago and now he's making the final it's been gaining a lot and i and i he's facetimed loading. him and i was like and i facetimed him today and i was like hey man i was like I was like, damn. So I was like, how are you at 10K yet? Because it's a big thing. He's like, actually, he's like, I was going to, I was going to text you. He's like, dude, I'm at 9999, 9999. And I was like, no shit. I was like, and I looked up and sure enough, sure enough, he was one away. And I was like, hold on. I was like, I don't think grunge, I don't, I was like, I don't think, I was like, I have multiple accounts. I was like, I don't think grunge Bible follows you. So I popped over. Hit him a follow, and we we christened him at 10k. I was like, and I think, I, and I think while we were on here, he actually I, I sent him a video because I screen recorded it. Yeah, he and posted pretty, it. I'm, he tagged. Yeah, he posted it. <laughs> Let's go. It's fucking perfect. I mean, it was honest. It wasn't even like yeah, exactly. I mean, like, no, dude, you can't make that up. No, dude. It was. I mean, you saw the number change. So that's like. I mean, that's. That's something to drink for, you know. That's I'm important. pumped about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll so drink to that right for, there. For every, th- every, for all the right reasons, <laughs> in the words of 
<laughs> is that three doors words down? Of Chad is Kroger. Chad Kroger, Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, not not three doors down is a, a different song. Yeah, fuck them, dude. But um, Chris, it has been a pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, this, um, this was a lot of fun. We needed this. Um, that's why uh, we do this. Every, you know? Hopefully, everyone out there listening needed this as well. Um, wherever you are in your travels, this was a lot of fun. Um, I look forward to uh, sitting down once again with you, Ethan. Uh, so once again, as we get ready to head off into the world. Um, We hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope you're having a good day wherever you are, whenever you are. And we look forward to seeing you back here next week for episode 71, where we get a little bit deeper into Audio Slave. But go get those tattoos with your friends and uh, enjoy life, man. That's what you got to do. That's right, dude. Remember that these are, in fact, the glory days. We're living in them right now. Every day that you're alive is one of those days. So uh, be thankful. Talk to somebody. Have deeper than surface level level conversations and i promise you that you won't be disappointed uh chris it's been a pleasure as always ethan love you brother love you too man all right guys see you same time next week grunge bubble podcast is out rock and roll take care everybody rock and roll